Okay, so hey everyone, uh, my name is Ali Said. I am the um, uh, Marketing Cloud User Group Leader, I start here in, in Dubai. Today we have a, an amazing session. We have two individuals who will be took the, the time to, to share their the knowledge and expertise on two key products. Um, I'm gonna just skip straight into the intros. Um, so we have Deepak John and Adam Dorr. Um, who will be talking to us uh, about the loyalty program, the loyalty management that Salesforce have recently introduced. And Adam will be going through the site called Connect and how it's integrated with Marketing Cloud. So Deepak, uh, over to you, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm a marketing specialist with um, Salesforce. I've been with Salesforce about five, six years. So I look after the Middle East uh, and, and um, UAE and KSA, actually, along with my colleague who's on the call as well, Wajd. Um, we've been fortunate enough to work with customers across retail, financial services, uh, and, and the like. So, Ali, thank you very much for having us today. Pleasure having you, Deepak. Thank you. Adam? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so, it says on, on screen, uh, yeah, Salesforce Practice Director, Horizontal Digital. Fairly, fairly new to, to the region here, moved out to Dubai just a few months ago, uh, but been working with uh, Salesforce for, for around about a decade. And likewise, looking forward to uh, to presenting to everyone and uh, having a, a bit of an open uh, discussion on any topics we cover. So thank you again. Thanks very much, Adam. Uh, so for those who are on the call, um, today's session is, you know, it's an open forum. So as Deepak will be presenting the lo loyalty management, please, Feel free to to ask any questions and also to Adam once he starts presenting Cycle Connect. Um, you can obviously ask questions on the chat, so I'll be directing them to to Deepak as uh, if you want to ask your questions that way. Um, this session will also be recorded, so I'll be sharing this on uh, on LinkedIn and on the other social channels. So if you um, if you want to share this with your with your colleagues as well, please feel free to do so. Okay, so. Over to you, Deepak. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and I'll hand over to you. Super. Thanks, Ali. Let me know once you're able to. Yep, we can see your screen. All right, super. Uh, well, first of all, thank you, everyone, for taking time out of your day to sit with um, Adam and I um, to talk about all the latest and greatest at Salesforce. Um, and a massive thanks to Ali you know, for inviting us here. So for today, um, given the time that we have, I plan on covering a little bit of everything. And I want to spend a few moments actually to begin with to talk about the actual concept of loyalty, what it means from my perspective and also from Salesforce's perspective and what and why this has been launched. And time permitting, we'll go into a short demo as well. So at the end of this session, I hope this gives you a bit of enablement. But importantly, I hope this gives you perspective on what loyalty is and how Salesforce can support you. What I won't be covering today is pricing and packaging. So if you do feel the urge to buy something on the basis of what you see today, reach out to us. But we're not going to talk about any of that. With that, a word from our sponsors here. So as you know, Salesforce is a publicly traded company. So if you are thinking about making purchasing decisions, please do that based on products that are commercially available today. So with that, let's move on. So whoever has been following Salesforce for the last so many years know that we've grown as an organization. And in fact, we're celebrating our 22nd year anniversary today. And over that span of 22 years, Salesforce has brought on board a whole raft of technologies right, and skills. But importantly, when I look at this, it's about the people. Right? It's about the smart people who've been able to build what we know today as Salesforce's customer 360 platform. So you've got all of these capabilities all the way from CRM, Sales Cloud, Marketing Cloud. Um, you've got the new introductions like Slack and Velocity that was being added on, and then Tableau coming into the mix as well. So if you think about what all of this has culminated into, and this is one of my favorite slides, and you've seen this at every single Salesforce presentation. For me, it just talks to a very succinct message of how all of those 22 years worth of technologies, they've actually come together. right? If it were any other company, I'd be calling them legacy technologies. 
But what Salesforce has done here is an incredible feat of bringing together all of these technologies into a single platform and effectively saying you put the customer at the center of everything that you do. But what that means is I look at this from two perspectives. The first perspective I look at this is all of the external facing things, right? So you see sales cloud and service cloud and marketing and commerce. This is where you as a brand will engage with your customers, whether that's you know, over the phone, whether that's on WhatsApp, whether that's on email, SMS, you name it. But internally also how you as a business come together in building that customer 360 view, whether that's collaboration, whether that's um, enablement for your employees through adoption and things like Trailhead, best practices, all of those things. So I'll, I'll come back to this slide, but it's important to remember that when we talk about loyalty, when we talk about customer 360, it's important to realize this. This is actually built on this 360 view of the individual, both from capabilities that you see outward facing, like everything that you see here, but also internally, how quickly can you adopt and bring all of this to life? And today, we're going to talk about the latest and greatest, loyalty management. McKinsey did a survey uh, a while back, right? So they came out and said about 37% of consumers have tried on a new brand from the onset of COVID. So it's about a year now, right? And they've done this for a number of reasons. And you and I, we know this, right? It could have either been product availability, shift to digital, e-commerce. And if you're in the UK like me, it could possibly be the availability of something as trivial as toilet paper. Uh, but 80% of these consumers, that's the thing, 80% of these consumers, they intend on sticking with the new brand that they've actually tried. So for existing businesses out there, this is ringing alarm bells across your traditional businesses because they're losing customers and churning. And so this whole concept of loyalty has suddenly now taken a forefront for organization. Today's customer, that's you and me, right? We've got more channels and more ways to interact with the brands than ever before. And while this is creating opportunities for these brands to engage, it's also creating endless options for the brand itself to be confusing in terms of how they take the message over to you and I. And with the increased competition and the opportunity for the individual to go to any single brand out there and the preferences, there's an incredible pressure to establish that customer loyalty. And, and when I say loyalty, traditionally, loyalty has stood for only one thing, which is to facilitate transactions and two kinds of things, right? Number one, it's either to make sure my basket is actually bigger, so I'm getting you to buy more things in a single transaction, or second thing, it's I'm getting you to buy more things more frequently as well. And traditionally, that's what it's always been. But if you think about how this has changed or is changing at the moment, based on data that we have from Session M, um, you may be familiar with them, right? Uh, so over those life, last five years, what's actually changed is this whole concept of evolution of, from, from that rewards and traditional points that define what a strategy looked like, so your classic earn and burn. And you can see today that it's actually moved into um, your customer service. So only about 42% say the rewards are actually the top driver for customer success. And people actually say 51%, in fact, in that survey say it's about exceptional customer service. And when you say exceptional customer service, it's got nothing to do with technology. It's how you as a brand engage with the individual. And naturally, technology will play an important part there, but it's about you utilizing the technology to drive that engagement across all of those omni-channel as well. And what the brands, in fact, I had this conversation with a really large retailer in the region. They explained this now. They said, in the next six months, not even in the next five years, that focus is now going to be on a couple of things. Number one is this whole concept of omni-channel, or whether you use the jargon, uh, hyper-personalization. So omni-channel and number two, about uh, hyper-personalization. This becomes incredibly critical for businesses now. So. And, and what, what that actually means is if you think about what traditionally organizations have looked at, uh, it, it's that one third piece that you see on the left hand side. It's all about you know, getting a point and making sure you can burn that point, earn and burn those two terms, or redemption, accrual and redemption of those points. Don't get me wrong, this is absolutely important. In fact, 
Uh, about 50, 48% of shoppers who are surveyed, they say discounts actually speed up the purchasing decision. You know, it may be the promise of a discount that brings you to the brand, but it's not the discount that actually makes you stay with the brand. It's got a lot to do with things like the program experience, what you do as a brand, how you're aligned with your partners and your rewards and everything associated with that as well. So, you know, breaking all of this down, building and maintaining loyalty has both sides of, of, of you know, that rational side and also that emotional side. And when, when Salesforce went about thinking, what does loyalty even mean if Salesforce were to rethink it and define a program? We kind of understood speaking with our prospects, our customers, people who are running these. It, it, there's going to be a few things that matter to them. You know, by most important things, you've got your points, your discounts, and your coupons that are very essential. And that's going to be a pillar of loyalty. However, today's consumers, they kind of expect three or four of these things, consistency, right? When, when you're engaging with the brand, every single touch point that you have the brand, whether that's a marketing email, whether you're picking up the phone, right? How many times have you and I got an email where we've actually bought something and the very next day you get an email saying, hey, here's 20% off. And you're saying, I've already bought it. So it's that consistency in the message from, from how you engage, whether that's physically in store versus what you see online. And then the experiences associated with that. Um, We've kind of moved away from this whole concept of, you know, I'm going to get points associated with this and we're going to burn that point. But, but people are beginning to now, you and I, we know this, right? We're beginning to more think about what does that translate into? Does that translate into me getting a free pass or an exclusive reward? So as much as loyalty is about mass, but it's also about that exclusivity of me being special and me being unique. And how does that happen? That happens when you've got a whole level of personalization coming in as well. Traditionally, this whole realm of personalization was either a digital or marketing piece, and loyalty was kind of an outside element in that. If you look at that numbers, 22%, only 22% of consumers say they're satisfied with their loyalty programs. And the reason for that is because there's a silo between the people who are responsible for defining the CX, the customer experience, the marketing, and the people who are responsible for defining what the loyalty program actually means. In a classic, you look at any organization, you've got a team separate for rewards and loyalty, you've got a team separate for marketing. And, and the way um, I'm taking this message is, if you think at how Salesforce has been helping our customers, now this is why this platform becomes incredibly important. When you think about engagement, when you think about personalization, when you think about what loyalty actually means, and it's not just about that discount, it's about that experience. Salesforce is incredibly well positioned to support this customer growth. Because, you know, discount may be the reason why you come to the brand, but it's definitely not the reason why you'd stay. So from that perspective, loyalty isn't just about that motivation, it's about inspiration to make sure that you can come and do and enjoy and stay with the brand. And if you really want to think about what loyalty actually means, think about the books that you read, the movies that you watch, the music that you listen. If somebody were to give you a free movie, and say, so here's a free movie, and it's from the, I'm not even going to call out names because it's being recorded now, but um, let's say it was a movie about a fish, a massive big fish um, swallowing people. If there were Jaws, I'd definitely go watch that for free. But if it was another movie that was released in the last couple of years, I'd probably think twice, even if it was given for free. So loyalty and your engagement is not defined not just by whether there's a discount, but also by your preferences and the attributes that you have. And they also matter very much in that personalized citizen. But importantly, you've also got to think about the context of when you engage as well. And this is why Salesforce is best positioned for a platform for building a loyalty solution. Um, and, and, and you know what? The fundamental things of what you need as a loyalty of um, earning and burning and all of those things, that's a given. That, that's, those are table stakes. But if you think about what the future for loyalty actually means when you're transforming and you're starting off from ground zero to redefine what it means to be a, run a loyalty program, you've got to think about it across a number of different facets. Um, and, and those facets kind of thing, you know, so let me break it up. So if you think about the sum total of what it means for a brand to run a loyalty program, it, it'll be a culmination of capabilities that most organizations have. That single view of your customer, engagement across channels, the ability to measure and analyze 
and bring all of that together. And that's exactly what Salesforce does in a loyalty management solution, right? So these are disparate capabilities. And if I think about this, these are independent capabilities that, that have existed within the business, working in silos. What the loyalty management program for me, it does, it, it, it kind of unifies all of these different touch points, engagement strategies, your PNL, and brings it together under a single program and under a single platform of Salesforce. So, so the question I hear you asking is, yeah, but what exactly is that solution? From a capability point of view, from what Salesforce is actually launching, it provides a number of different capabilities. It's a natural extension of that Salesforce platform and delivers a lot of these capabilities out of the box, as you see here. You know, your program setup, which is where you set up your tiers of gold, silver, bronze, the currencies of, now, am I going to earn it? Am I going to burn it? Is it for activation in terms of what strategies do I follow? The benefits associated with that, et cetera. There's that member administration portal where you get a 360 degree view of each individual to monitor their activity, right? What transactions have actually resulted in engagement and allowing you to service that member better. There's the partner administration because a lot of times the, the reward points and the platforms that you use will be working in conjunction with various third party in your entire value chain. Um, if you're a movie theater, if you're a financial services organization, the credit card points, classic example, where you can use them at movie theaters and restaurants and all of those. Uh, it's also about the rewards management, allowing you to define and track the member behaviors, having automated rules in place, to look at things like accrual and redemption. Then there's a benefit management, which allows you to earn, burn, allows you to build up experiential perks across the business. You know, for example, and I said, experiences would be things like free shipping and those sort of things. Uh, what else? Um, dynamics, promotions management. You know Salesforce does this incredibly well with our real-time capability, recommendations and expert action, real-time segments dynamically moving you in and out of segments, the coupons, the vouchers, and we acquired Tableau quite recently. So all of those great insights visualize for marketers as well. And then finally, um, being Salesforce, we've got this 22 years wealth of information that allows us to look at what works, what doesn't work, and allow you to build roadmaps and industry templates to support them doing that. I hope all of this makes sense. I'm just gonna take another few moments now to just walk you through the actual technology itself. Any questions, just pop them in the chat over here. Ali, if, if there are any questions, let me know, please. Sure. All right. Um, just confirm you can still see my screen. I've just moved over. You can. You can, yeah. All right, super, super. So I'm going to walk you through how typically an, um, a, a loyalty management program works. And, and, and in all things Salesforce, we're going to use our very favorite brand, Northern Trail Outfitters, as an example to walk you through that. So NTO has been providing for the last 22 years, would you believe it, shoes and services to all of Salesforce's customers. And they've got three different tiers, platinum, gold, and silver, that defines their loyalty program. And they have about 5 million gold members in there. So let's look at how Linda, in this case, was responsible for the loyalty management and the strategic mind behind defining you know, the PNL and the growth for that program, how she's going to use the Salesforce loyalty management solution. So um, she logs into the Salesforce platform. And what you can see over here, I'm going to hide this. What you can see is this is the platform that everybody knows and loves. This is the Salesforce platform and you've got access to everything that you know from sales cloud service cloud but now introducing loyalty into this as well so she's now in the loyalty console and she can see an overview of her nto insider program she can see how many members she has across different tiers she can see how that's progressing across time and how they're growing what she can also see on the right hand side here are things like kpis because remember we spoke that loyalty is not just about discounts and coupons. It's about the NPS score, it's about the CSAT and other attributes that actually make sense for a brand to recognize how much am I attracting and keeping my members as well. 
She's got a view on who are the loyalty partners, how many points have accrued against them. Now, this is incredibly useful because you, you log into something like this and you have an access to understanding what's actually working, which are the partners that have actually contributed. What does it actually mean by way of money? Because at the end of the day, loyalty programs are more of a financial instrument as well internally, right? So what is our liability? What's our potential revenue? What is outstanding based on all of this as well? And she could drill down deeper into this dashboard over here to see specifically against this, how that's tracking over time as well. And you can see over here, points that are expiring, liability and potential revenue that from this program as well. Now, this is all great. Let's think about how Linda can now use all of this data to then further nurture, build and manage that loyalty program. So we're gonna pick one segment. Let's pick say the gold segment over here and this is interesting. You can see the gold performed well, and over time, it's actually tracking down. And I can see that right at the bottom here, and I can see the engagement across these members have also decreased. So being the savvy marketer that Linda is, the thing that she would need to do is think about what sort of engagement strategies can I use now to increase the gold tier that I can get them to either accrue more points, which is to spend more with me, or to use those points to get more experiential rewards, which makes them more sticky as well. So at this point, what she can do is they jump straight into the Customer 360 platform and build a segment out for those individuals. Again, you know, this is the beauty of Salesforce, one single platform. This is our CDP solution, integrated as part of loyalty, as part of Sales Cloud, Service Cloud on that platform. She can go in and create a new segment here of all of the people that she wants to include in that. And if you're familiar with Marketing Cloud, it's exactly the same how you'd build a segment out here. So she immediately knows how many people are going to be in her population, and she's able to drag and drop all of the attributes. Because it's a CDP solution, we can bring in attributes not just from marketing, we can bring in attributes from commerce, customer service. Look at that, CSAT score less than four. So you could pretty much bring in from any system out there that allow you to build and refine that data segment for you. And once you've built the segment, it's a case of then publishing that goal segment that we have. Now, if she comes back into the loyalty program here, let me just maybe quickly explain what you have on your screen over here. So this is where the operational side of the loyalty program is. So you can see the tier groups that she's defined, you know how that's gonna go. She's defined the currencies associated with that, where you're going to get points, where you're not going to get points. She can see how many members are active within the business here at the moment and a unique identifier across them. And if you click through on this, it doesn't take you into your contact or your personal account within Sales Cloud again. She's also got a view on the transactions, you know, the millions of transactions that have actually happened across the individuals, so all of the journals on the purchase, the consumption, the use of those points are also available here as well. So let's go back to our story. So what was Linda doing? So she was looking at the data to find out how people were engaging and she found out the goal members weren't engaging. So she built a segment to support that. Now she's gonna look at what sort of promotion she can do to support them. So she heads over to the loyalty experiences and looks at what opportunities she has. So she can define a few of these strategies to do that, right? Number one is a benefit strategy. And a benefit strategy is more aligned to tiers. So if you're a gold tier member, you get X amount of benefits. If you go from gold to platinum, you get free shipping and free returns. If you're platinum, you probably will get birthday gifts. So this is where I spoke about that exclusivity, where you build that model here in terms of the benefits. At the bottom here is where you'd get your vouchers and your coupons that you can define that you can use. And again, you've got a start date, fixed value when they expire. And then you build that into a promotion up here that you can use. So in this case, she can go in and say, I'm going to give double points for everything for outdoor categories for those gold members, because I know that's where they shop a lot more. And you can define your start and end dates. And you'd say, I want it to be for reward points that goes out as opposed to actual vouchers. So that's the category and that's what she's defined over here. The next thing is to associate the segment that we built. We've got double points here. Now we wanna say, we're gonna put this for our gold members. We're gonna say, this is for gold members. So you could say, this is the volume of people. So remember, this is the segment that we built a second earlier. And you can add additional people in here if you need. So for the moment, the gold members, and then you'd say, where can I actually use this? 
So I'd say, I want to use this for outdoor activities, right? So I can go in and select all of my product categories that are defined over here. That allows me to define where I can actually get these double points. Great. So, so that's your loyalty strategy defined. Now it's a case of how do I execute on this strategy? And executing on this strategy actually happens, uh, let me come back over here, in, in the platform of uh, one that we always know and love, which is Marketing Cloud, right? So you've got your strategy that you've defined, and now we think about how we actually pass this information on. And passing that information on could be across any of these channels that we have, you know, email, mobile, social. So we go into something like Content Builder over here, we build out an email to say you've got double points for all of these people. But again, you've got to then define who this is going to be valid for as well. So this is when you kickstart a journey over here. And then you bring that same segment that you define in your loyalty and your customer 360 to execute that on a marketing cloud solution here, platform here. You know, so your strategy, this is where it gets incredibly clever. You've defined the strategy for double point. At this moment, you're saying, I'm not just going to send an email. I'm going to decide whether this is the right channel. I'm going to try an SMS. I'm going to try a push notification. Did they do it? Then we ask for feedback. If not, everything that you know about Marketing Cloud, you know, the Einstein capabilities of send time optimization, dynamic content, all of those things available for you to choose over here. So once that's defined and run, you start getting these for those segments of people. And then it's your classic marketing journey here. And then you bring all of this back. You've got your analytics to see how far you've progressed and moved on as well. So that's a quick overview of what the platform is. Let me just wrap this up very quickly in terms of capabilities that we have. So the loyalty management platform from Salesforce brings and unifies everything together. But specifically, capabilities are what you see on your screen when, when you actually buy a SKU for product management. And the capabilities, if you, want to, if you want to make notes at this moment, is number one for me, it's that connected experiences across sales, service, marketing, pulling all of that data together that brings offline and online channels to bring um, the right message, right channel with the right offer that you can transact. Number two is the fact that it's built on the Salesforce platform that makes it incredibly easy to scale and use for most marketers and businesses. So you'll be up and running in no time once you've got the right set of data points in there. And you can run this for both B2B and B2C uh, opportunities as well. Um, and then finally, it's about th this. This is a very important point. When Salesforce went to market to say, what are the kind of key areas of improvement that traditional loyalty points do not, programs do not meet today, the friction between onboarding partners is one of the big ones. And through the platform, you'll be able to quickly bring on board additional people in that value chain that you have and work through the different categories and product tiers that they have as well. Now, for the technical people in the room, I just want to quickly call this out as well. What is it that by way of in capabilities that we're introducing into the platform as well. So you know, you've, you've got your classic three layers, uh, your presentation layer, your service layer, and your data layer. And you've got capabilities that you can see that the loyalty platform here delivers. So you've got your UI, the setup associated with that, your decisionings and everything supported with that. And again, you've got all of these other capabilities that naturally pull data in from various other platforms like uh, Einstein Analytics or Service Cloud and doing that as well. And all of this fundamentally sits within the Salesforce platform as well. So you've got access to both your contacts, your accounts, uh, but importantly, you've got access to all of those marketing and commerce insights as well that you bring in. So wrapping all of this up, it's a relatively new solution brought into the platform just now. Uh, for me personally, I guess the biggest advantage to most organizations who are looking at loyalty is as Salesforce, we're able to unify experiences through and through across every single touch point, build that unique single view. What that means is from an experience point, loyalty just becomes one of those business as usual conversations that you have. And the way your customers experience that would be through the loyalty program, which is just an extension of that wider Salesforce platform. In, in doing that as well. With that, I will pause, um, say thank you to you, 
and ask if there are any questions. Uh, otherwise, I'll hand it over back to you, Ali. Thanks very much, Deepak. Um, yeah, we'll take a quick minute just to see if there's any questions from any of the guys on the call. Hi, uh, yes, I do have one. Um, hi, Ali. <laughs> uh, just a quick question, really. So, how does it? Um, how, how does Loyalty Cloud connect to to Marketing Cloud? Is that just through the the standard Marketing Cloud connector? Yes, it is. Yeah. So you got the classic right. MC Connect. Where it's it's you know it's built on the Salesforce core platform, isn't it? So your MC Connect would pull all of that data back and forth. No worries. Okay. And then I just I take it you get the relevant um, loyalty objects in in the synchronized objects in Marketing Cloud. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Thanks. Ali, I'll stop presenting now and hand it back to you now. Thanks very much, Deepak. Okay, awesome. I think we're good to go with Adam, to be honest. So, Adam, over to you. I can do that. Let me know when you can see my screen. It's loading. Yep, we can see your screen. Cool. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. So, uh, as Ali mentioned um, before, um we're looking at how to connect sitecore and and salesforce as it pertains to to marketing cloud um it leads actually quite nicely on um from some of the points that deepak uh, was was making before around sort of connected experiences because i think you know one thing is i want to discuss kind of why why bother connecting these and right and i think that the the, the core message is to create those connected experiences that, that Deepak was referring to. Um, then I'm going to go through a, a little bit about what is uh, what is available um, in terms of the connectors, and then walk through a, a client example and a, and a very sort of simple step-by-step -step demo of, of um, what the interface would would look like in a in a typical scenario from uh, from one of our clients that we've done this. And uh, as um, as always, we'll we'll take a Take a few moments at the end just to have uh, a quick a quick Q and A. So, like I said, the, the the why. So let's kind of figure out why creating a customer experience is important. I don't want to spend too much time on this, um, but what I do want to uh, address is that um, there, there's a lot of rapid change um, in the the Middle East in, in particular. Right, and, and I think it's important to, to address, obviously, that everyone here is, um, is, is operating in, in this region. So people are less brand loyal. 78% um, of consumers expect consistent experience wherever they engage. And I think one thing that's important about that is the, the trend to, to mobile in, um, in the Middle East um, is, is nearly twice that of of the national uh, national excuse me the, the the global average. So I think that's um, you know we, we we need to understand what the expectations are before we sort of back the technology into that. And, and then finally, this is a specific one from from banking on a presentation that I did a um, a few a few weeks ago. And the the number one trend with with banking leaders is um, is to improve their their customer journey because they are typically. Um, more more offline historically than, than than online. So figuring out what steps um, you should take a, a little bit about like like I said before, thinking about what you need to do before you um, actually implement um, the, the technology. And, and I think it's understanding your customers, right? So thinking through the life cycle stages that people um, go through, understanding that that's no longer a sort of cyclical uh, approach. So really thinking about what they're thinking, feeling, and, and doing, and, and what content needs to be served up to them as a result of those those actions. Um, and I'll explain in, in a few more slides time how the, the two tools work together to, to surface that content. Then mapping, right? So plotting what content you, you currently have, what, current, what content you potentially need, and also what data points and, and, and types, and, and where do they sit? So. Um, quite a lot of the time, in, in order to personalize on on the web, a lot of that information is is mastered, as 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 um, Deepak showed before. You know, in CRM, and it could be in order, customer audience 360, or it could just be in, in the core CRM it's, itself. And then, 
from there, we look at the integration stage, and obviously that's something that we're going to touch upon in a little more detail, specifically on this this call. It's it's sort of centered on this this middle phase here, um, and going through some of the out of the box and and custom connectors available, and then looking at how we execute that and and also learn from that. So you know, putting a an omnichannel campaign in, great, but how do we learn, and how does that then loop brand to inform the understanding again, because ultimately this, as I said, is not just a, a, a linear approach. We then need to understand how we then plot that back out to see if there are any changes that we need to make from the, the content data integration and, and improvements on execute on the execution of those of those campaigns. So how do we actually pull that together? And, and I've purposely left this slide um, with without any builds and, and looking kind of messy to be to be perfectly honest and and the, the reason for that is just to sort of illustrate that the the life cycle of a, a customer as i mentioned before is no longer linear right so yes okay we've got the kind of standard um journey of acquisition purchase engagement great but actually they're looping around all the time so we need to know that at a certain point of time, we haven't just come through and we're looking to upsell and cross sell. They may have looped back, and we need need to drop them into a, a nurture program in in <clears throat> excuse me in marketing cloud, or indeed all the way back and capturing further detail for for a different product, for for example. And I think it's important. Obviously, you've got the kind of Sitecore and Salesforce um, logos at, at different stages here, uh, but but at, at the same time, you'll notice there's a lot of overlap. You know, where there's portals built or um, communication that's being sent. So it's critically important that, first of all, we understand what this journey looks like, of course, but then actually the, the two technologies are, are not overlapping um, and, and are not clashing. And, and more importantly, the people that are operating those um, those technologies understand that as well. And I'll, again, I'll come onto that in a, a, a couple of slides time. Uh, but but I think it's, it is really important to um, understand that, you know, from a digital perspective, yes, we need to connect Marketing Cloud and and, and Sitecore if your 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 web your website is built on on Sitecore. But also, um, and again, something that, that Deepak referred to, this is an entire journey, right? So that there there needs to be a consideration, for example, at the bottom here of of, of call center and live, which obviously would all fall into the the service cloud element of this, but understanding that that's all got to be part of the the experience that um, that is served up and to that point the experience and execution element is is critically important so most uh, and it's not entire but most of the experience that's served up to your audiences is is handled um by sitecore um, and obviously a little bit of marketing cloud as as well but you need to be able to plan build manage the content but also show that um, to your audiences based on their their personas and their their life cycle stages. But you know, again, it's a cyclical approach, right? The experience goes hand in hand with the execution. If you're serving up something on a um, a, a Sitecore website and you've got the um, content all mastered there in, in Content Hub, you best make sure that that similar approach is then executed through a a marketing cloud environment over SMS and um, and email, right? And that comes really in, in two forms. One is the the data that we're gathering on a, a particular person, but the second is is of course the actual individual content items that we're serving up. Again, come on to that in um, in, in a few moments' time. Um, and then obviously we need to be able to measure this, right? And and but I think at the core has to be your your, your crm I, I think that, that a a very common problem that i've seen um since uh working on and, and engaging with sitecore and, and salesforce joint projects is that um historically they are dealt with by different teams so you know you could do fantastic personalization on the web with with, with sitecore and managing your content uh, process fantastically and you're executing a fantastic journey for example in in marketing cloud but the problem is there that the data held within those is only as good as what it can see, right? And if it's not centralized, i.e. within Sales Cloud, then 
actually you 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 end up doing more harm than good because you're so, you're showing two in inverted commas personalized journeys but they're personalized in different ways across two different tools and i think that that a real really key point to make is that the approach has to be um what i call an outside in versus an inside out approach and again something that um that Deepak uh, mentioned before, we're having the customer at the center of all of this, right? If I just look in my, you know, for example, if I'm the, the marketing cloud uh, admin, I'm going to look at all the data that I can see. Great, I, I've got I've got my contact um, model built, um, but I actually am not built pulling in all of the behavioral data, for example, from, um, from Sitecore XP, the experience platform. Uh, and I need to be able to do that if I'm going to provide a, a, a consistent experience. So like I sort of alluded to before, that's the sort of technology aspect of it, but it's also the, the people and, and, you know, specific that sort of graphic there in the middle that that, that, that all of you guys, I'm sh sure most people are gonna sit in one of these teams um, that, that, that I've got here on, on screen. But the important thing is that everyone kind of needs to understand what function each, tool is, is performing, but also understand what those joint um, KPIs would, would would look like and, and have a common understanding. So again, it's great that we can generate fantastic journeys in Marketing Cloud, but if they're not married up to the experience that someone receives on their, their web and the content's not consisted, consistent, then we, um, we, we have an issue. So specifically how, right? There are a number of, of of connectors that are available out of the box. Um, so the first one um, is Web CMS, uh, and that's for uh, web content synchronization. So there's actually three ways to do that. You can um, you can manually sync the the, the content um, into to Marketing Cloud. Um, there is a uh, an event handler option, um, which um, I believe runs every ten hours. I think it is off the top of my head. Um, and there's also a, a push agent. So again, sort of thinking thinking through what those scenarios may be and um, when you might want to manually do this versus versus automate this. Alongside that, obviously people are engaging with that content. So we need to sync the content, but we also need to make sure that the behavioral data is exchanged with, with Martin Cloud. So um, you might want to Remove, add or remove people from data extensions, trigger specific journeys. So um, something that, uh, that that I'm working with somebody at the, the moment is they have a, a strategic goal to become more of a, a direct consumer um, brand rather than going through intermediaries. And, and one of the biggest options that we have within the technology that we, that, that's in place across Salesforce and Sitecore is to create a user account, and, and you know, for, for us in, in the Salesforce world, that is a um, lead or contact in, in, in Salesforce, and obviously um, a, a record in, in Marketing Cloud. Now, in order to do that, though, we can trigger the generation of that account fairly simply through a form, but ultimately, that also needs to continue their journey. So, a cart abandonment process may be triggered um, from from commerce. They may look to um book uh, an appointment with somebody online um but but not sort of follow through on that and again that needs to trigger a journey in marketing cloud and and, and automating that is is obviously extremely powerful we all know that um we, we've probably built um our our cloud pages and and, and triggered journeys in in that way but this is a a much more sort of comprehensive and holistic approach that that you would take um, and then, like I sort of alluded to before, using using different imagery um, and oh, sorry, just take a step back. Using the same um, imagery across both um, uh, across both platforms again for that uh, consistent experience. Um, now, the second portion is um, purely around content. So I talked about content before uh, on, on the web CMS. Um, Cycle also has a, a digital asset management tool, which um, is a, a tool which obviously as it suggests manages and, and masters um, you know, product material that, that's hosted on the web. Again, similar to what I just explained bef before, we want to make sure that the, the imagery and the branding and the sizing and everything is, is, is consistent. 
And again, you can bring, bring them directly into Content Builder for, for, for email campaigns. So I also wanted to touch upon, and I know this is obviously specific to, to, to Marketing Cloud, but it, I do feel that, it, that it's very important to touch upon the, um, the sales cloud and the CRM connect element to this. And, and, and the reason for that is simply because, for the reason I'd explained before, a lot of the, con uh, excuse me, a lot of the data, the profile data that's, um, that you may hold should, should be mastered in, in your sales cloud environment, right? So I think that, again, um, making sure that there's a, a sync between the two, two platforms to, to manage um, that, that central view on the customer is, is critically important. And I'm not going to dwell on this one um, too much, but there's also a uh, a community cloud uh, connect as well, um, which is actually the the, the Salesforce um, CMS connector. Now, just um, wanted to touch uh, upon some some sort of limitations in discussing some some custom options, and the reason for that is because you know obviously when you guys go away and, and figure out what's What's right for you? You need to go, you need to work through use cases. So, um, the the, the connector in Sales Cloud, uh, which obviously we can use it for, for marketing, is is limited to um, contacts, so leads and contacts actually, Salesforce tasks um, and, and 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 events, and then um, site core interactions and, and email messages. So, um, if you're if you're looking to pull in other data around other standard objects, um, then a a custom solution may be more um, more relevant for you, and also we need to think about um, the level of um, uh, propensity here. So, if the, if you need real time data transfer, then again, you might want to look at a, a custom um, option. Good news is there are custom options out there. There's there's a a tool called uh, S4S, which is a third party um, connector, which pretty much is specifically built to um, to outline or to, to, to combat all of the, the limitations that the, the out of the box connectors um, could not do. So again, we can attach it to different campaigns, multiple different objects. There's a bi-directional sync from any sales card object to, um, to site call. And there's also some um, personalization um, that you can do a more comprehensive personalization on the, on the site call side. Um, I don't have the specific rules. I'm not a, um, a site called admin, unfortunately, but the, the level of personalization is, is certainly greater. And obviously, the third um, option is that um, you can build a customer connector between the two, as you can with with everything. But 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 here, um, you can sort of meet the requirements of the S4S connector, um, which is obviously more expensive to set up, and you've got to maintain that. But there's no not no ongoing sort of license fees to to um, to S4S um, and, and, and the team that, that, that manage that. OK, so I wanted to just jump into a quick um, example. I'll just give you a bit of background on, 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 on who these guys are. So Advisor Board, a um, US firm uh, in, in the healthcare industry, founded um, sort of 40, 40 years ago. And, and they produce research um, for uh, produce medical research. Right, So they provide insights. Uh, strategies and tools to support um, the execution of, of, of new drugs and things coming out. And they are a membership service. So the important thing here really is that their their content is their business, right? So they uh, produce all of this um, content through an extensive research process and serve that up on, on their website. I'm going to go through every step-by-step -step here on, on screen, so I'm going to walk you through it in, in just a second. Um, but essentially what I wanted to, to show here is um, the, the the interaction between um, Salesforce and what's stored in Salesforce, and how that's served up to create the experience for the uh, for the end user, uh, and that's going to be across a, a member. And again, that's based on what they are eligible to to receive. Um, people can see your your sort of user account overview, and you can also subscribe to subscriptions, which obviously is important because a lot of that is driven out of um, out of Marketing Cloud. Okay, so hopefully you can still see my screen. Yeah, perfect, perfect. So I'm already I'm already logged in here as I said before. So um, if I come in to my account, uh, 
So everything that you see in, in here, so um, you have your own individual um, profile and that profile is based on um, what, you're, what you're eligible for. So if any of you have done sort of a partner program, um, partner programs in, in, in Salesforce, um, you know, when, you, when you're on the community, um, people are you know, eligible to see certain pages on that community, see certain content. So very similar here. Um, but the important thing here is that, you know, if I sign up to um, certain um, elements on my, on my profile page and certain interests, and I save that down to my account, all of that is is um, then fed directly into into Salesforce, and then triggers certain actions to happen within within Marketing Cloud. And that's why, by the way, why I wanted to touch upon um, the importance of the Sales Cloud connector, because a lot of this information is stored and mastered in in Sales Cloud, but but indeed leveraged in in Marketing Cloud. And again, to to my point, everything that I see here. Is is based on rules that are set within my my sales cloud um, environment. If I've subscribed for upcoming events, again, all of that's mastered in Salesforce. Or if I want to, you know, explore some upcoming events, if I don't have any, I can navigate to that. I don't know if I have any that are eligible. Okay, great. I, I do. I have something here relevant um, to me, um, so I can come in here and I can actually um, automatically register for this particular event. And again, that will then um, be passed out back down to um, to my Salesforce record, and again trigger communication. Right? I mean, these webinars are obviously a a, a fair way out in in terms of a date. So I want to have some reminders and things that are sent out. And again, all of that communication can be um, can be handled by by Marketing Cloud, and that may well be just a simple email chain. Um, or it may be um, served up to an app if they're using the, the advisory board, board app. So just coming back to, to my account, um, I also have, again, memberships. So again, I can subscribe to, to um, or I have subscribed to these different um, memberships, again, based on what my company has, has paid for. Um, <clears throat> and again, if I want to see other uh, memberships in here, and what, what I'm eligible to see is all mastered in, in, in Salesforce. And if I sign up to um, you know, the healthcare advisory board, for example, as soon as a new piece of research comes out, that again is, is driven out through, um, through Marketing Cloud for, for, um, for consumption and, and for use for that, um, that user. Obviously, you've got all of the sort of standard um, elements here on, on a particular person. So um, what their name is, title, address, et cetera, et cetera what department they're in. Again, this is all test data. Um, all of that, again, is, is mastered in, in, in Salesforce. And then the final element is, like I said before, email subscriptions. So particularly important in, in, in their business, but, but important for all of us. I can come in here and I can actually just navigate here and sign up to the different, um, the different news, uh, newsletters and blogs that, um, that are relevant to me. Of course, again, all of that is, is managed there through um, through Sales Cloud and, and Marketing Cloud. Okay, um, so that was kind of in action. Obviously, it's the the kind of interface um, that, that, that the, the end user sees. Obviously, there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes there um, in order to to create that experience. Um, but hopefully, it gives you a good idea of um, how that might want, how that might hang together for for a particular use case. Um, so again, um, thank you very much, Ali, for, for inviting me, and thank you guys for uh, taking the time out to, to go through this um, and listen in. Any any queries and questions from from anybody? I'm just checking the chat. If there's any questions? Nope. I think we're good to go. All right. Awesome. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed uh, today's session. I guess a special thank you to you, Deepak and Adam, for taking the time to present loyalty management and psycho connect and i'll be as i mentioned i'll be sharing the the recording on, on linkedin so look out for it and share it with your uh, with your colleagues yep no problem at all and thank you once again everybody and thank you ali for, for setting this all up my pleasure all right thanks everyone have a great day thank you bye-bye bye-bye